Greetings. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. I'm Lexi Eve, and welcome back to another Walk Magic video. So, I've been doing um, a lot of stelles and other art pieces recently, and I haven't been commuting, which is when I'm commuting is normally when I'm writing my scripts. So, I am working on another uh, Magic Without Tears video on letter C. And I've also been slowly working on a script for a walk magic video about invisibility. But in the meantime, I've had this idea stirring on my mind since uh, a couple of videos ago when I mentioned the idea of saying will as a practice. And so I wanted to do a little unscripted video about the concept of saying will. So without further ado, that's the topic and let's begin. So saying will is recommended by Crowley as something Thelemites do pretty much before any meal that you eat. Um, I've seen people do it before any time they eat anything, including a light snack, to doing it uh, sporadically. Sometimes Thelemites only do it when um, they're in public gatherings, feasts, if you will. I tend to do it before all big meals. So... Normally I do uh, breakfast, a dinner, and a light snack. So I'll do it before breakfast and I'll do it before dinner. Um, if I have a third meal in any given day, I tend to do it before that meal as well. But it is something that I do every single day. And with these practices like Libra Resh that you do four times a day, saying will, uh, Libra Jagorum, where you don't say a specific word, or think a specific thing for a full week. Things that you do sporadically each and every day, day in and day out, they do a couple of things um, besides what the practice initially entails. They also keep your mind focused on the fact that you are performing the great work and that little reminder periodically throughout the day multiple times is just a way of nudging your mind back from the distractions of everyday activities to, hey, I need to do this practice because I'm performing the great work. And so constantly nudging your mind towards something helps you achieve in the long run singleness of purpose. And by doing that, you're reminding yourself again that you're doing the great work and you end up over time becoming strictly focused upon that thing and that gives you discipline in other areas of life so that you, when you take up any other project, you now have this discipline of, I know how to stay on target, not start this thing and then veer off into 10 other things and completely forget about what I started or just give up on it entirely. You know, um, it, saying will, doing rash, those periodic multiple times a day practices really do help with focusing the mind. So... That's the first thing. The next part is, what is saying will? All right, so I'm going to go through how to do it in a moment. I don't exactly remember off the top when Crowley started implementing the, pro uh, the practice. I'm pretty sure he was doing it in the Abbey, so maybe that was where it started. Um, it may have originated in OTO settings. I'm not 100% sure where it started from, but it is something that he had recommended for a long time before he passed on. So it was like a, you know, something that many of his students were told to do. So the, the process is this, right? There are two ways you can do it, either in a group or by yourself. If you're in a group, there's one single person who leads it, and then everybody else has short responses. Uh, it's only a couple of lines. Whereas if you're by yourself, you just tweak what is being said so that you're the only person talking, right? So you'll see on your screen first, uh, I'm using two graphics, which will help you visualize who is saying what. So the first graphic is a single person. I have Crowley as a magician. Crowley as the magician graphic is going to be for the single person leading saying well. Here you have a group of people. This second uh, graphic is going to be for the responsorial. That'll represent people responding to what is the leader is saying. All right? So this is how you say will in a group. The leader begins. They knock. 
three five three. Then they say, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. The response is, what is thy will? The leader, it is my will to eat and drink. The response, to what end? The leader, that I may fortify my body thereby. The group, to what end? The leader, that I may accomplish the great work. Everybody, love is the law, love under will. Then the leader knocks once and says, fall to. So two very quick notes that I'm putting into this video after the fact, so forgive the placing. Uh, first off is knocking, 353. Three. If you notice, um, 3 and 3 is 6, and 5 makes 11. So it's the pentagram surrounded by the hexagram. And 1 at the end signifies done. It's either a beginning or an end. Like Kether is the beginning and the end, the alpha and omega, so to speak. The top is in the bottom, the highest is in the lowest, the lowest and the highest. The number 11 is the number of magic. And if you want more about knocking, I talk about knocking in uh, Libra Abba, in one of my Libra Abba videos, I believe, about the bell. All right, so you could find out that. The other quick note that I have is on the terminology fall to. So it's military terminology. And it's what a militia would say before they all eat all at once. Saying fall to or saying something like that inspires unity amongst all present. So for Thelemites, it's supposed to instill said military ideology amongst those present, they whose will it is to perform the great work. And for the initiated in certain orders, um, they understand their roots go back to Knights Templar. And so depending on if you've ever been in any of the, the Lemic orders, there is a lot of Templar symbolism surrounding them. So there's a militia idea um, instilled in the Lima, the Lemic practice, especially in the Lemic groups. So I'll leave it at that. I'll get into what this does in a moment. So that's how you do it in a group. If you're by yourself, you only have just your individual person there to say the both parts. So you adapt it slightly. So you'll begin by knocking and then saying the words and then you'll knock and love is the law, love under will, knock, fall too. So I'll, I'll go through this. This is if you're just an individual, solitary practitioner by yourself, you're about to eat a meal. So you're gonna say will. Knocking. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It is my will to eat and drink, that I may fortify my body thereby, that I may accomplish the great work. Love is the law, love under will, fall to. So you take out the to what end part. I mean, so you could mentally um, say it if you'd like to, if it helps you remember it at the beginning or if you feel so inclined. Perhaps you could even say to what end, but um, it's kind of weird having a response when you're the only person. So you just adapt it in that way. Um, alternatively, when you're in a group, how I like to do this is, granted, if everybody is going to be eating, I like to, even though you should never, in any other circumstance, tell a person what their will is. But in group settings, especially if you're like like me with uh, having dinner with my fiance, we're both about to eat. We are both Elamites. It is both our will to eat, and then we're both doing the great work. So it's clear what our wills are in this instance. So when I'm with him, let's say I'm leading, uh, I'll go. Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. He'll say to what end, and then I'll say. It is our will to eat and drink, to what end? That we may fortify our bodies thereby, to what end? That we may accomplish the great work. Love is the law, love under will, fall to. See, so I, I change it from singular to plural. Uh, by all means, feel free to take that and do that if you'd like. Uh, I find it better than saying it is my will to eat and drink. Meanwhile, everybody there is also there to eat and drink and to do the great work if you're in like a thelemic setting. Um, 
you know, it doesn't make sense to me to do it. I'm the only one whose will it is to eat and drink when everybody is going to engage in the food. Um, I, I guess it, it can make sense in other senses, but uh, I, I like to keep it plural. If everybody is engaging in a feast and if everybody is there a practicing magician, that to me it makes more sense. What is saying will do? All right, so besides getting your mind focused by doing something multiple times a day, it's a definite alternative and formality, like how Christians say grace. A lot of different religious um, systems implement saying something over a meal or before a meal. You know, it's, it could be a very communal experience. Uh, in this case, everybody is becoming mentally aware that the food that we're intaking is nourishing our body to then be used as energy to do our magic and perform the great work, right? So you're literally doing an alchemical thing and you're making yourself mentally aware that I'm intaking a, a food substance, that food stump substance is getting burned in my stomach and then it is being transmitted, transmuted into energy so that I can do something to increase my spiritual life there, thereby uh, with that nourishment. This is now my opinion, and I think that this is pretty cool, and feel free to agree or disagree. Um, a lot of practices are attributed to different paths or sephiroth on the tree of life, especially if you're doing great work formally and in order. You'll notice in like AA, and you could see this in Eshelman's uh, magical mystical system of the AA, there are specific practices that are attributed to specific paths on the tree of life. There are also tasks and grade lists of work that students have to do each and every grade in, say, AA or in the Golden Dawn, right? There, you get to Malkuth, you have to do this work. If you get to Hod, which is Mercury, corresponds with Mercury, you have to do this list of work before you're allowed to take your next initiation and progress. So there are definite practices attributed to different grades. And then there are smaller practices, especially like Crowley's has many Libras. A lot of them are in the Equinox Volume 1. A lot of those books can be attributed to different paths. And so this is my view now. So if you have different rituals or meditations or things like saying will, they can be attributed to the Tree of Life very easily. And when you're doing those type of grade work, rituals, to me it's like you're activating that tree of life microcosmically. And so you're beginning in Malkuth, you do that work first, and then you connect the first few paths upward. And you want to make sure that those are the strongest because those bottom uh, Sephiroth, Malkuth, Yesod, Hod, Netzach, and those paths that connect uh, those one, two, three, four spheres, those paths need to be the strongest because they're going to support the rest of the tree of life above them. So if those paths are not constantly re, uh, refortified, they can crumble, they can dissipate, and it's not going to crash down. The tree of life is always stable within you. But theoretically and um, allegorically, to me, it makes sense. It's like you're building this ladder up to heaven, to the highest. You want to make sure that the rungs on the bottom are strong enough to hold that ladder upwards, you know? You don't want the foundation, yes, so you don't want your foundation to be weak. You want it to be strong. So you do the basics every single day. You never have to then stop and come back to the basics, right? So I attribute saying will to the path of shin. Now you could agree, disagree, but why I attribute um, the path of shin, uh, saying will to the path of shin is this, right? What you're doing is you are taking food you are consuming it, and then you are burning it in your stomach, and then it's becoming spiritual energy. Do you see the symbolism there already? Shin means tooth. So what's the first thing you do when you intake food? You chew it. Your teeth grind it. So shin already. You swallow. It gets to your stomach, and it burns. Shin is tooth. But it corresponds with fire. Right? So already you have two very important symbols in the process of eating. And by saying will, what you're saying is, I am taking this meal to nourish my body so that I could use its energy to perform the great work. 
Well, what happens after that food has been burnt in your stomach? It turns into energy. So it allows you to gain spiritual uh, energy. It, you know, it's fortifying your spirit. You're consuming this food, making it energy, and using that energy so that you can fortify your spirit. Now, spirit is path 32 negative this, which is also shin. So you're literally transmuting food into a spiritual substance by the, to performing the great work, nourishing your body, using that energy to perform the great work. All of the symbolism from the tooth to the fire of the stomach burning the food, and then the process of that energy being used to perform the great work, to thereby nourish your spirit. You're turning this food into a spiritual substance within you. You're nourishing your body and your soul by performing the great work. And you get the food and then the great work, right? So to me, it's a very, very, very perfect uh, small practice for the path of Shin. And you would think, right, like the lower practices on the Tree of Life are simpler than the more advanced practices that go higher up and closer to um, the supernals and spheres of the sun and you know it can get very complex hode can be complex but um the lower down should be somewhat simpler even libra resh obviously is soul resh right and resh corresponds with soul and libra resh you're worshiping the sun so i see uh libra resh as attributed to the path of resh so when you're doing your libra resh you're actually fortifying that path microcosmically you're increasing the vibrancy and the strength of that path in your microcosmic uh, spiritual body. So I see, again, um, saying will as corresponding with the path of shit. And you want to do this day in and day out and really mentally fortify yourself to, hey, you're here to perform the great work as a magician in this incarnation. And so you need to constantly remind yourself and then you're actually doing something very spiritual. You're making yourself aware of the process of an alchemical process of trans transmuting food into a spiritual substance, into energy, and then using that energy to perform the great work. So I, th I think it's a very beautiful practice. Um, so I recommend everybody say will. Um, I'll find a page online that has the instructions so that you can have them on a printout. If you do it every day, let's say you eat three meals a day, so if you do it three times a day before every meal, you say, well, it should be no more than three to four weeks at the most before you have it memorized. And it's short enough that it's one of those things you never really forget as long as you don't give up practicing for many, many years and just abandon the great work and your bulimic uh, regimen. So if you do it from today on every single meal, within a month, you'll have it memorized and you'll do it enough that it'll just imprint in your mind. And that's something else, just quick. When you imprint things, spiritual things in your mind, that becomes a part of you. You garbage in, garbage out. Really good stuff in, really good stuff out. By putting in, um, like in Dilema, you memorize texts as part of certain grades in certain systems. Uh, memorizing those spiritual texts, you're, in, you're ingraining the concepts of those holy books into your mind. And what's in your mind comes out through your actions. So if you're putting holy stuff in, hopefully in enough time, your actions become way more positive and you start to get a more purpose-driven life, you start to get more impactful results from your actions if you're doing the Lima uh, with all of your effort putting in. Um, so that's saying, well, hopefully I was able to find a link so you could have a script in the description. I'll post the link. Um, take a look at that. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that you agree with my analysis that it falls to the path of Shin. And, you know, this is my views based on conversations and experience of saying well every single day for many years now. Um, this is the result and uh, what it does and how to do it and how to get the most out of it. Do it every day. Really understand what you're saying. Think about the process of what you're doing as you take in a meal and then your body gets energized and then you use that energy. Think about what you're using that energy for in your own personal life on a daily basis. Then from there, you could kind of uh, reorient and check out, am I doing the right best things to help me do my will consistently on a daily basis? Or am I using the energy from my meals for self-destruction? 
you know, or to hurt others in some process because, you know, people can be like that. We all go through hard times and hurt people hurt people. So take a look at one's own actions. Think about the energy that's coming from food and think about this practice and uh, how it reorients your mind by nudging you back to, I do this say will multiple times a day. Every time it's nudging my mind back to the fact that I've dedicated my life to performing the great work. And the more you remember that that's what your purpose is, the better the chances are you're going to end up doing the great work instead of, you know, I'd rather watch TV, you know. I don't want to record this YouTube video for everybody. Um, I want to go do whatever and have fun and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm, this is a part of my great work. This is a way for me to do service and give back. You know, so think about in your own life how what you're doing with your energy and is it helping you in performing your great work. Love is the law. Love under will. I'll see you all in the next one.